Okay, let's start. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Hu Zuozheng. I come from Alibaba. I'm the founder of a Dragonfly. Uh, can I ask you a question? Have you ever known a dragonfly? Or have you heard of a dragonfly? If you do, please raise your hand. Okay. Uh, a few of them have heard of dragonfly. Okay, I will give you a comprehensive introduction of a dragonfly so that you have a better understanding of uh, this project. And today I'd like to talk about four things related to dragonfly. Sorry for that technical glitch. Okay, sorry for that. Well, I will talk about a dragonfly. History, status, adoption, and roadmap. First, I will talk about history of a dragonfly at the milestones it have achieved. And next, I'd like to talk about a dragonfly community, its a current architecture. And I will share with you two cases on how external companies using dragonfly and Lastly, I'd like to talk about our future roadmap. What is Dragonfly? It is a P2P-based, highly reliable image distribution system at large scale. It aims to improve distribution efficiency and lower the bandwidth cost. And uh, why we've developed a Dragonfly? Well, with the um, expansion of Alibaba business, um, the deployment uh, volume increases. Therefore, the um, software packet to be distributed has increased too. And uh, due to the uh, bottlenecks in um, pulling images, our distribution efficiency is very low. So in order to address this uh, bottleneck, we've uh, used a P2P to increase the um, distribution efficiency of uh, images and uh, software packet with um, more and more scenarios. Uh, we have been improving and adding new features, for example, dynamic uh, compression, etc. And we are trying to build a dragonfly into a comprehensive file and image distribution system for all scenarios. This is important milestones of uh, Dragonfly. Uh, Dragonfly was born in June 2015. So the first version was released uh, within the group in June 2015, mainly supporting P2P file distribution and uh, CDN. In September 2015, that is three months later, we were able to support image distribution. We developed a local proxy, so we've downloaded images and put on a local client. In November 2016, Dragonfly covered the whole Alibaba group uh, with uh, 1.5 billion downloads every month. We formally became uh, part of the infrastructure of Alibaba. In November 2017, that is one year later, in order to address more uh, problems and uh, further improve distribution efficiency and lower bandwidth cost, we've uh, developed automatic preheating, memory file systems, and through dynamic compression, 
we have uh, lowered the bandwidth cost, especially cross-region and cross-country uh, bandwidth cost. And uh, we've also became open source in November 2017. And in November 2017, we were the first to support um, single stay sales campaign of the Alibaba Group. When we uh, are shopping all the sales data, you know, uh, nearly um, 12 p.m., there will be uh, GBs of the data need to be uh, pushed to tens of thousands of uh, computers within 30 seconds. If uh, we've uh, pushed the wrong data or the push pushing failed, it will probably lead to the fact that we couldn't uh, shop during the single stay. That means Dragonfly is uh, a very highly reliable system. It can address various kinds of file and image distribution problems under all scenarios. And in November 2018, Dragonfly joined CNCF Sandbox project. At the same time, we integrated with the Harbor. I don't know uh, whether you know about Harbor. It provides image uh, registry services. We are now integrated with the Harbor. We uh, developed with uh, Harbor in developing automatic preheating function. Uh, we will um, sync it up with uh, Snowknob uh, node of uh, Dragonfly. Currently, we've uh, completed refactoring with a uh, Golem. Uh, it uh, the version was already released, and we also support HTTPS image registry. Uh, uh, distribution. In the past, we could only support HTTP, and now we have over 50 adopters. So these are important milestones of a dragonfly. Next, let me talk about uh, status of a dragonfly and the overall architecture. Um, native shows uh, using the native uh, download method that is dot pool without using Dragonfly. On the left, we have testing conditions. Two servers, which are Dragonfly servers, with a 24 and 64 G SSD and 1000 MBS. We've uh, tested on 200 VMs. It's a uh, 4 and AG 100 MB second. And on the right hand side, we have uh, the concurrency downloads uh, and uh, average costs. Uh, the green one is native and the uh, Orange one is Dragonfly. With the um, increase in downloads, you can see that the average cost of native has grown exponentially. And whereas if we use uh, Dragonfly, the average cost remains flat in spite of the increase in number of uh, downloads. And with the expansion of the scale, Dragonfly's um, advantages uh, became more and more obvious when uh, reaching certain scale using native will probably lead to explosion of registry. That means the image downloads would fail, whereas Dragonfly could address all the uh, problems faced by native. This is a Dragonfly community. We have uh, 3,700 stars and over 50 adopters. These two indicators 
rank number one in terms of image distribution, and our adopters come from different background, cloud computing, e-commerce, financial services, telecom operators, um, live broadcasting platforms, etc. We have six maintainers, two are outside of the company, one from eBay, one from May2. The other four are internal maintainers. And uh, we have 32 contributors. And I hope uh, that more of you could uh, join us to maintain uh, Dragonfly and to help it grow. And currently, we have uh, discussion groups on Ding Ding and Gitter. We also have uh, WeChat discussion groups. Next, let me show you the P2P mechanism. Dragonfly has uh, two main components, Supernode. You can regard it as a P2P scheduling center. On every uh, physical node, we will deploy a DFGAT, which is a client of Dragonfly. And DFGAT include two small components. One is a DF daemon, which is a smaller version of DFGAT. When we download images, um, doc pod will move to dfget and then submit request to, to supernode and supernode will check whether there is um, image file locally otherwise you could um, download images from registry to local to local it is by uh, it is a sync up by block. When Supernode downloads a block, it will package block and uh, generate an overall block, and the overall block will be downloaded by client. If one cloud, uh, one client uh, download a block, the block can be shared with other clients so as to achieve P2P distribution. We know that one image has many layers. When all packages on the single layer are downloaded, a, contain a container will copy the file from dfget to local registry. And every layer is downloaded in this way. If all layers of image is downloaded, then the, uh, the port um, the download will be completed. For Supernode, Supernode also support a remittent storage. If a download uh, only proceed 50%, then when a connection is ready, Supernode only needs to download the other 50% of the file. In this way, it will improve the uh, download performance. Now let me look at, uh, let us uh, look at the Supernode architecture. Supernode has uh, several modules. On the top, we have an API gateway, which provides a REST API. Uh, the core modules include P2P scheduler, CDN manager, transmission control, and preheater. And on the, on the bottom, we have storage manager. And next, I will give you detailed um, introduction of uh, every module. For P2P scheduler, it will determine what kind of blocks should client download and uh, which kind of client you, you need to download uh, blocks from and what about the uh, download um, speed. First, let's look at how Dragonfly determine what kind of blocks should be downloaded by a client. We use two strategies. One is sparseness, the, uh, the maximum sparseness principle. We would choose in the P2P the most scarce 
block to the uh, questing client so that different blocks in the P2P network can balance dynamically so that we can avoid the scarce block or the sparsity. So with the sparsity theory, we can choose a block, choose blocks, and then for the different blocks, for example, there are a lot, but of course, every time the operable block is limited, for example, we have two blocks, and now the client can only download one block. So how do we choose one from the two? Actually, we use the back-to-back. Back to back. What do you mean by that? So that means that when the client downloads the different blocks, now we know it's uh, block 8 and 9, and the client can only choose one. Then we would choose 9 because 9 is the closest to 10. That means when the, down when the client downloads, it's like uh, a sequential I.O. We can do the driver I.O. so that we can have this sequential reading and writing so that we can improve the I.O. efficiency locally and improve the image distribution. Now the client has already chosen the blocks to download. So for the blocks, uh, where, which clients should we download them from so we have the proximity that means we should choose the closest client that is on the network because the latency is smaller then we can reduce the download latency and also we can choose different clients then among the target clients, we need to do another screening, and now we can use affinity. We can use affinity to define which client is, uh, has a better affinity to my client. And also we have the work limiter to choose the lowest load client. For example, now we have two target client A and B. For A, A is uh, providing three blocks out and two is providing only two. So then we choose B because that the load there is the lowest. And then the speed to respond to the requesting client is faster. So that is the uh, scheduler strategy. Now we have uh, six strategies, of course, and they combine with each other so they can also impact each other. Then for CDN manager, that includes the synchronizer. Synchronizer, we have the multi thread uh, continuum so that we can uh, synchronize the image. Uh, we have the breakpoint resume, so we can uh, generate the seed. And then for catcher, that is the CDN cache. So it includes the, the cache testing and also the cache uh, dynamic GC and then compressor that is the dynamic compressor and we would dynamically decide whether this fold uh, this uh, file should be compressed and also the compression strategy is uh, block level that means for the whole file we want to compress it but we would choose the most worthy part of the uh, file to compress rather than the whole file. So with this kind of method, the compression benefit is the largest and also after the compression it will be cached so we just need to compress once and use multiple times and of course according to the super node load we would decide whether to compress or not. Then we can avoid the impact on the super node normal scheduling 
and the compressing is also multi-thread. And then transmission, we have the rate limiter that includes the super node uh, synchronization image and also the client and its uh, downloading speed for the blocks and then the size limiter that is the size of the block for different files the size would differ and then data security it means for different block we would use the dragonfly designed format to pack them then we would uh, avoid any manipulation during the transmission the fourth module is the preheater of automation it is not just for container image it's also for general files and what do we do in preheating so when we build the image when we push every layer that we pushed we would have the slap hook request for super node and then that layer of file is synchronized on the CDN uh, local cache so when we push after we pushed the image is uh, synchronized to the local cache of CDN and when we apply and uh, deploy when we pull the image then there's a hit in the cache so we don't need to synchronize once again from the uh, from the network so that the image distribution efficiency is better better so with these strategies dragonfly will try its best to improve the download efficiency and reduce the cost and the bottom layer is the storage manager we have different kinds of data to be stored for example the block data and the metadata the metadata for different block and also the MDU code and also the number and the files then for the link data this is the soft linker data why soft because with soft linker we can uh, go cross file system so we can uh, access to different driver on the super node with the soft linker we can access to all of the drivers and the last one is statistics data it includes for example the time of distribution and also the success rate and for each node uh, which client are they downloaded from and so on then it's more convenient for us to analyze the distribution efficiency and also we can provide some data support for the later improvement and on the bottom layer that is the memory file system we have uh, the memory file system as well as the disk file system why do we have the memory file system because we want to solve the problem of a large file distribution for example 10 G 10 giga so it will occupy part of the IO resource then it will cause impact on the downloading of other files so we can use the memory file system to avoid this kind of uh, situation and we can solve the large file resource issue just now we talked about the allocation or distribution principle and also the architecture I believe that you already have some uh, wholesome view on Dragonfly so let me introduce to you the use case first on uh, in Alibaba cloud in Alibaba cloud there is this ACR service the Alibaba container registry service so let's take a look how they used Dragonfly so it uh, 
deploys the SuperNode config API, and that component will uh, maintain the basic configuration of SuperNode. For example, the list and also the rate uh, control and also the hardware control and so on. And then on each node, there is this config watcher. And periodically, it would put down the configuration and save it locally on different nodes. And when the container applies pull, then the pull is uh, onto the DF daemon. And then, according to the config watcher, it will pass it on to DF get client. Then the client, according to the config, it would request on the relevant super node and then the process will be like described just now now for ACR has this uh, demo version with uh, Dragonfly and if you want you can try it and this is another example in Zhejiang Mobile, how they use Dragonfly. So above there, that is the DCOS system of uh, Zhejiang Mobile. They have this client in charge of uploading the image and triggering the image download command. And down there, the light blue one, that is the Dragonfly component. So they would uh, uh, upload the image to Harbor and push it to Harbor. And this is the backend storage. After the push, there is this distribute command to the API gateway. Then the API gateway would call the kernel service, kernel service and then it's pushed to the doc server. Doc server, you can understand it like uh, doc daemon, the API uh, interface. And then the doc daemon would uh, push it to DF client. The DF client then will interact with the DF master, which is the super node. And then there is the PTP network, and there is the P2P transmission. So basically, then the process will be just like how I described it. And this is their data comparison. The blue one is the uh, deploy time average, and the red one is after the use of Dragonfly. Clearly, you can see that after using Dragonfly, the application deployment time is largely reduced. I think the efficiency improved by three times. Then let me introduce to you the future planning of Dragonfly. So I will talk about several things. For example, the CNF ecosystem. CNCF ecosystem, we would uh, cooperate uh, or integrate deeper with uh, Harbor. And also, we want to support the Clinic D, and uh, that is already being carried out. Then for security, we will support the private container image registry and also that's already done and then in encryption we would uh, introduce different encryption algorithm for the customers to choose we can ensure that the transmission is safer then for efficiency of uh, distribution we also explored a lot especially in the intelligent uh, flow control and also the intelligent uh, scheduling algorithm and then in openness First, we used the Golang to refactor SuperNode. Now it's uh, better integrated with CNCF. And now in the new version, we used this kind of uh, plugin uh, based architecture so that it's uh, uh, easier to scale according to the customer demand. And then for scalability, we would simplify the complexity of uh, scaling of SuperNode so that with the 
increase of distribution, we can automatically, flexibly scale. Stability wise, well, uh, Supernode is already very stable right now. Assume one Supernode fails, well, uh, it's nothing to use it because all the uh, clients of the Supernode will migrate to another normal Supernode for continuous downloading. So it has a high availability, otherwise it will not become infrastructure of Alibaba. Of course, in order to further improve its stability, we are exploring a solution that is decentralization. It's not an entire decentralization. We just want to weaken the role of a supernode and further re minimize or further uh, we try at least our purpose to minimize the impact on user when the supernode fails in terms of uh, scenarios we will support more cloud disks the entire Alibaba group will move to cloud so backend storage is uh, via cloud disk Therefore, we will support uh, more cloud disks. And uh, in the future, we're going to support uh, different repositories, which include uh, Ledges, uh, Maven, Git, etc. So this is our roadmap. OK, um, that's all I have to say. Any questions? What is preheating? As I've mentioned, when you build image, you need to push. For every layer you push, the uh, image registry will generate a request to Supernode. After getting the request, Supernode will sync up the uh, image to its local to locally. Therefore, a Supernode don't need to sync up image from remote registry. It will save time and uh, further lower bandwidth cost for registry. Um, what is uh, the, lab, uh, the progress regarding integration with Hover? Uh, now it's at the preheating stage. Hover has a registry. When you push the image to Hover, Hover will notify us the request, and we will uh, download the uh, image to a uh, local supernode. So unless uh, when you push, it will, uh, it will automatically um, process, yes. I'd like to ask you, you refactor Supernode with Golang. Is it based on CRD or you did it yourself? CRD? We did ourselves. We use Goland in refactoring. At the very beginning, a Supernode was uh, written in Java. And now we are open source and become a member of a CNCF. So we refactor Supernode with a Golang. Yes, almost all CNCF project will use a CRD. Uh, we are different. So you say that you're going to use disk for system. Supernode, every supernode will use its own file system to store all the files. So when you deploy, you will use the master's file system? Yes. 
The question is that, that if one supernova fails, the other get will go to supernova for further downloading. The supernova is a local storage. But images, if one supernova fails, how can you? And how can it migrate to other supernodes? If one supernode fails, our, planner, our client knows uh, how many blocks this file has. When I request a new supernode, I know uh, how many blocks I need to request for. What about other supernodes? How can they sync up? Uh, to uh, the uh, failed supernode. Well, I'm not sure about your question. Your supernode failed. The entire disk, let's assume the disk's file system fails. How um, other supernodes know about this information? They don't need to do, know about that information. This uh, uh, client moves to new supernode. You need to re register. And the supernode will check whether you have local cache. Otherwise, you need it to sync up. Yeah, they need to resync again. The client, how, how many blocks they need to, uh, or how many blocks they have downloaded, they need to report it to new supernode. Only in this way, can supernode knows how to distribute the rest of blocks to the client. Another question, the Dragonfly doesn't uh, support KAS? Yes, it's an image container. How about a persistent storage? It's a file system. So we use the Aliclaus uh, storage system. We use the local storage. We use the local file system. And we are planning to use the Aliclaus uh, OSS or the uh, network file system to do that. I have a question. Supernode 